What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quarter, and here's a, a bizarre story uh, via Ben Shapiro on The Daily Wire. Apparently, the co-star from Gran Torino, um, B. Vang, has now tried to retroactively cancel the film that he was paid to co-star in, probably because he hasn't gotten any work in Hollywood since said film. But, I mean, that's just too many facts for you. There's plenty of things that have aged poorly, and I understand that. I have a different perspective on it than, say, Disney, though, where, you know, I don't think slapping a warning label on it does any good. I think people can see something and understand that, hey, that's not okay. If you remember Gran Torino, that was kind of the whole premise of it, um, and as I move forward here, by the way, if you're watching this video and you haven't yet subscribed, I hope that today will be the day I earn that subscription by clicking that red subscribe button down below the video. And if you haven't yet backed me on Subscribestar, this is the single most important uh, financial line to supporting this channel that there is. Um, and, you know, as more and more videos get suppressed and, you know, mainstream opinions become non-mainstream opinions as time passes, I hope you'll consider uh, going over to subscribestar.com slash the quartering and backing today. Awesome benefits too. Now, Gran Torino writes, uh, Gran Torino co-star tries to retroactively cancel film, calling it insensitive. Clint Eastwood flexes box office muscle again. In 2008, by the way, this is 15 years ago. Um, well, 13, almost 15 years ago. Eastwood directed and starred as Walt, a cranky veteran spending his golden years slinging racial slurs at his multi-ethnic neighbors, especially Hmong residents. Now, I live in Wisconsin where we have several pockets um, of the Hmong population, or we have high-density pockets of Hmong population, and always seem like awesome people to me. It's rare to interact um, unless you're kind of living in their area, but always awesome people, in my opinion. Um, now, of course, when a local gang threatens both Walt and said neighbors, though, the old timer pushes through his terrible racist feelings to put his life on the line for them. Literally. The film gave Eastwood another hit, generating $150 million at the U.S. box office, along with mostly glowing reviews. The film's Rotten Tomato score stands at an 81%, while audience offering up a 90%. It's one of those rare times when both the audience and the, the reviewers are on the same page. The U.K. independent marveled at how Eastwood in his late 70s at the time showcased an era older character going beyond his bigoted ways. Now, an Asian actor who co-starred alongside Eastwood with the film, the kind of opportunity any, any actor would cherish, uh, says Gran Torino helped contribute to anti-Asian sentiment. B. Vang admits the film gave amongst a very rare, nay, historic cinematic close-up. He still regrets the film, saying the words employed by the Walt by Walt made uh, racism more acceptable stateside. I'd like to see now. Obviously, this is just his opinion. He's probably not backing this with any kind of study or data. And all I can offer in response is my opinion. The idea that this made it acceptable is ridiculous. Walt was so backwards and, 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 and like the, the idea, the reason that sometimes when you said things that were overtly racist made people laugh is because it was like so absurd that, um, you were seeing this, like, the fact that he was so backwards is what, like, that that was the funny part. Not the the fact, not the racism. The fact that here this guy is that still exists with, like, these, you know, calling people zipper heads and things like that. It was crazy, but, it like, you weren't the butt of that joke. He was. At a time when there's a lot of discussion about whether the movie's slurs were insensitive or and gratuitous or simply, quote, harmless jokes, Vang writes... I found it unnerving. By the way, I don't know if he gave his money back or not, but that um, the laughter at the words elicited in the theaters with predominantly white audiences. And it was always white people who would say, can't you take a joke? Again, I'm not saying that there was nobody who was like genuinely racist, for example, taking joy in those jokes. But the laughter you heard in that theater was not people laughing at 
they were laughing at how absurd it was. Um, Gran Torino may have elided the crisis of Asia, uh, the crisis in Asia that birthed our dysphoria and many others across the Pacific, but more concerning was the way the film mainstream anti-American racism, even as it increased the Asian American representation. The laughter weaponized against us has beaten us into silent submission. Vang puts the film in context with an uptick in anti-Asian anti sentiment in the United States following the lockdowns. Now, again, just to be clear, B. Vang has literally starred in nothing since Gran Torino. He starred in Gran Torino in 2008, then another follow-up short in 2010, and then he started, started something in 2020, Boy Luck Club. I don't know. Like, I wouldn't exactly say his career took off after that. Uh, maybe now as an adult, he sees this as a way to uh, get the spotlight on him, which it works. I don't blame him. I, I, you know, hey, secure your bag. I am not surprised this is what you're doing. It's exactly what Molly Ringwald did. Uh People Magazine says Eastwood's representation hadn't returned, representation ha representative hadn't returned a request for comment. Good. Uh, one can imagine Eastwood's true feelings on the subject, so it's best his media team is laying low for now. What Vang is doing, of course, is nothing new. Molly Ringwald became a superstar thanks to filmmaker John Hughes. Decades later, after his passing, Ringwald blasted those very films for being hopelessly unwoke. Stars like Bryce Dallas Howard and Viola Davis denigrated their own film. The 2011's The Help last year because it they deemed it unacceptable to tell that story from a white person's, white character's perspective. Octavia Spencer, a black actress who earned an Oscar for her role in the film, hasn't been as vocal in her opposition. Shocking. Now Vang turns the movie role of a lifetime, his first official acting gig to be precise, into a cudgel to go after Eastwood, his film, and the movie's racial healing. He's trying to defang Eastwood, the storyteller, in the process. How would one convey Walt's dramatic change of heart without showing his callous comment comments early in the film? Such Should such characters never appear on screen? What about hitmen, antiheroes like Tony Soprano and Walter White? Uh, where would Vang draw the line? After all, millions uh, are secretly not so rooted on both Soprano and... Wait, I'm sorry. After all, millions secretly or not so secretly rooted on both Soprano and White in their respective shows. Was that wrong? The best stories offer complex characters who are neither good or evil. They're like us, humans, struggling with flaws, but open to the possibility of becoming a better human being. That's precisely what happened to Walt, who would go on to know his neighbors so well that he fought to death to his death to protect them. That was not virtue signaling. That's having real skin in the game. And it's what made Gran Torino all the more powerful because of it. I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the idea that, like, I just think you're misunderstanding what people were laughing at. They weren't laughing at the jokes that he was telling. They were laughing out of uncomfortableness, out of the fact that like, whoa, whoa, that's like freaking spicy. It, it's their laughter wasn't approval. Um, you know, it says for decades, audiences howled over people in pain from people stepping on a rake or unexpectedly plunging into a pool. They still do. That doesn't mean movie moviegoers are cold, cruel, unworthy of our empathy. In fact, their laughter doesn't mean the audience condones a specific thought or action. Chances are Eastwood himself might tell you, tell the younger actor that he had engaged the icon face to face rather than pen an essay for the media. Certainly the bigger messages found in Gran Torino, growth, acceptance, healing, and sacrifice linger longer than a few ugly words in the film's first act. Well, of course. I mean, I, 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 obviously, right? Look, I think the obvious point here is just that he's looking for a little bit of clout, a little bit of headlines. I don't blame him, but, um, you know, maybe be a little less transparent about it. Uh, I'd be interested in hearing what you think about the movie. Do you think that uh, you can, you know, I think you can you know, portray somebody who has these opinions without using the actual words. But is that the society we want to live in where there's words that are forbidden from use? Uh, I don't think so. It'll be interesting to see uh, if this picks up any steam in the media. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.